the brand new Acaso Rave 6 Plus. Coming out end of May 2020. And I got a early one so that I could do a review on it. And here it is. And that's what it looks like. A little tiny thing. Similar to a GoPro. And this one is kind of modeled to be an economical alternative to the uh, GoPro 8. The size, roughly uh, two and three quarters inch and uh, five eighths, and just uh, an inch and what is that, three sixteenths, somewhere in there, counting the little lens part the weight of this is only 2.9 ounces as you can see in the picture so it comes with quite a few accessories you have the waterproof case which comes in handy so you don't get the camera wet it is obviously bigger than the camera so that it can encompass the camera <laughs> the uh, lots of accessories lots of mounting options but that information is available on Casa's site or uh, you know whatever retailer you want to use so quickly here let's just talk about some of the features that this has the uh, Brave 6 Plus has native 4k 30 frames per second it, you can adjust that lower, of course, to other settings. Uh, it has a touch touch screen. So the screen back here is actually a touch screen. And you'll see that. It, it'll support up to 20 megapixels for pictures. It has voice control. You can start video, stop video, take pictures, turn the camera off, all with voice control. It's got a remote control. This here, I put it on a little strap for my wrist. I can take a picture. I can start and stop video with that. It has a six axis EIS, the electronic image stabilization, which seems to work pretty well. It has an eight times digital zoom, 40 meter waterproof with that case. It does have a Wi Fi, which comes in really handy. So you can use the Acasa Go app from your tablet or phone to view media that's on the camera, download media, and you can even uh, control it from the app, start video and that type of thing. It does support an external mic, it does time lapse, and it does slow, slow motion. And I'll try to show you most of this in this review so you can actually see the quality of it and determine whether that's something that's good for you. I will tell you, I have a 64 gig uh, micro SD in it. It will support uh, about two and a half hours of video at 4K. The batteries last a little over an hour. They, and they take two hours to recharge a battery. Let me also mention this product isn't going to be available till end of May. That's when they expect to have it out. I will have a discount code, I hope, uh, and a link to the product on Amazon. I'll get those up as soon as I can. And I'll also put up the user manual uh, link so that you can look at the manual. I've got Wi-Fi on the can enabled on the uh, Brave 6 Plus, and I got my iPad here. I have connected to the Wi-Fi on the camera, and now Brave 6 Plus connect camera. So if I turn this, oh, you can see what I am what the camera's looking at so it's a remote viewer on the iPad it, it works with other uh, tablets and phones as well I can start and stop video 
I can change between video and photo. I can switch it if you want to go horizontal. Maybe. What am I doing? Here we go. You have conf a configuration. Depending on what mode you're in is what you'll see here. And I don't, I'm trying not to make this a how-to, but these are some of the things you can do from the app. I change it to photo. It changes the camera to photo. And I now have photo instead of video. Change back to video. And as you saw, I could take a picture. So if I click here, it'll bring up what I already have on the camera. So recordings as well as photos. I don't have any photos, so these are all recordings. And you can download these or you can simply view them. Here's an example. Whoa, that one I messed up when I was doing it. Let's just delete it. I can delete it from here. I can download, delete, cancel. Well, I actually want to delete it. Successful deletion. Click there. It is now gone. If I want to view one, I can... There's a video. Probably won't use that one. It was pretty boring. I can pause. I can exit. But we'll leave it there in case. And then we're back to live video. So the app works works pretty well. So real quick, let's take a look at what you can do from this touch screen. It's pretty cool. I'm not going to cover everything, but I just want to show some basics. Push up, wireless is off, voice is on, it's not locked, and there's power. You can do uh, video settings, video mode, resolution, image stabilization, blah, you can read these. Lots of options. I have pretty much everything on auto. You can do video or photo, so you can change it to whichever one. You can also do video settings, photo settings, camera settings. So camera settings, things like upside down, you can apply several filters uh, to change your coloring. Screen mode, type, so what you're filming. There's a diving mode, which hopefully we'll look at here in a few minutes. Indicator light, so you can have the light on the front light or not light depending on whether you want it to and it will flash if it's lit it will flash when it is uh, recording screensaver time power off time your frequencies key tones whether it's going to beep when you touch stuff date stamps language wi-fi info format be sure to format your sd card after you put it in and every once in a while there's your photo modes you know you got several options You can see all these, and it works fine. It, it works uh, well with the touch screen. So, happy with that. You can also view that is a video I just took. And let's go back. There's a previous video. So, you can fit, uh, flow through whatever you have already recorded and it, it will show you your like this case it's configured for video 4k 30 frames per second voice is on battery level and then the time left that's time left for space on the card on the uh, sd card all right we talked about basic stats but honestly how does it actually perform let's check it out A selfie stick that's about five feet long and it's mostly cloudy. Sun's trying to break through right now. 
This is at 4K 30 frames per second. Image stabilization is on because the camera is really shaking because I'm really not good at selfie sticks. I just don't use them. So this is at 1440 at uh, 60 frames per second. This is back to wide angle. So you can get a glimpse of 30 frames per second versus 60. And I don't guarantee that my editing software is going to do this justice. But going between the 4K and the 1440, I'm not sure you're going to be able to tell the difference. But we'll find out. So we're now at 1080, but it's 90 frames per second. 90 frames per second. What's interesting is you can't do the image stabilization uh, with this mode. So the question is, and there's debate on which is better, frames per second, or the image quality for when you're moving, say, a dash cam, that type of thing. 14K, 30 frames per second. On a bicycle. I don't kill myself. with image stabilization on. So this is inside the car video video videoing through a dirty windshield and a person holding the camera so it's probably not quite as still as it would normally be. But this is kind of like what it would look like uh, dash cam. If you use it as a dash cam, mounted it to your windshield. You can hook up a USB to the camera and it'll power up when the car turns on and power off when the car turns off. Image walking into a dark garage on a cloudy day. See how it adjusts. Yeah. Not bad. Look into the light. Based on the little screen, it looks pretty good. And slow motion mode. Time lapse mode. You ever wonder what it looks like from the fish's point of view? This is inside the case. Sound is on. Curious as to whether you can hear it. This is in diving mode. That's why the color is a little funny. Let's see if it really is watertight.
Same thing, only this time I don't have it in diving mode. Sketchy, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So how does it sound? Playing could be better. So I picked up a, an Acaso external microphone, the only one I found. Now granted it says it's for the V50 Pro, Pro SE and uh, V50X. I was, since it was the only one I could find, I was hoping that that would work with the, this new Brave 6 Plus. It does not. The, the micro USB is not the same. So, I am unable to test it. I was really hoping the external mic would work well because the internal mic, you've got to be right up on the camera to really hear it as you see in the video. That pretty much covers the video side. Let's look at the photo side. Without distortion calibration, with distortion calibration enabled. It does not rotate pictures like your uh, phone would. Here is a sampling of some pictures to show the quality at 20 megapixels. And all this video and the pictures were all taken with it set to auto. You can adjust exposure as well as ISO, but I did not do that for this video. An example of burst mode. I hope you found this video helpful. I know I'm really liking this thing. It's simple to use and has and has good quality. I think this may be my new video camera for doing my YouTube videos. I need one. All right, so please like, subscribe, comment. Got any questions? Feel free to ask in the comments. I will try to answer if I can, or maybe someone else can if I don't know. And there should be a discount code soon, as well as a link to the product once it is available. Take care.